Okie dokie. Knee pads. So today we are going to cut another hole in the bus. We thought that it would be a good time to take an intermission before we lay all this gorgeous floor down um, because when we do welding, it shoots sparks everywhere. And though we like the Shishugi Bond look, this isn't the thing we want Shishugi Bond. So we're gonna cut a hole for the bathroom window because we just found one. Watch your head. I'm not scared anymore. Oh, watch your melon. Yeah, that's what I'm ducking. It's tight, tight quarters in here. That's all right. Luckily, we've got the, whatever it's called, scaffolding. We can't be grateful enough for the tools and stuff we've been able to use. We're so fortunate, so grateful that my dad has a contracting company and we're able to borrow his tools. And then we've also got to borrow a ton of tools from our neighbor and from and had hand-me-down tools from my grandpa. So yeah, having scaffolding is seriously Wow, right? <laughs> Makes a super stable surface to do some work on. Safe. Super safe, super safe. And what was cool is this scaffolding is perfect height for cutting out the window. So right here we've got a hat channel and we've got already it all connected, but imagine a new window being right there. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the window out and then we're gonna cut the cardboard to make a template to for where the window cutout's gonna be. That's the flan that holds from on the inside of the bus. This will go on the inside and hold against the metal while this piece goes on the outside and then it sandwiches the skin between this. So something that's cool on this particular window that our larger ones don't have is this one actually comes with weather stripping. Now, I know you're probably gonna be wondering why are you putting a slightly curved window on a flat surface? Well, this is all we could find up here and we've been looking for ages. Uh, before we bought this window, we were trying to find one that fits directly in between the hat channel so that we could just put it in there, but we couldn't find any that were uh, made out of real automotive glass, the safety glass, and that's important to us. So- A lot were made of plastic. Oh, a lot of them were made with, with plastic for sure. We want that. Yeah, so we're going to install this one and even though it's got slight curve, we're gonna probably just build up the gasket area, the curved area. So if I take this straight edge and put it right there, you can see once it's compressed, it almost meets perfectly. So if we put an extra strip of weather stripping right in between this uh, area, uh, it should work just fine. So first up, we've got to make a template. So we cut out the box right here, and we're gonna put the window flat on it, and we're basically gonna just trace what the template will look like. Oh, we might take that knob off. We definitely need to take that knob off so it sits flat. flat. This window was most likely meant for like a sprinter van or something like that. Thus the little curve that it has on it. Um, we do have a plan for that, so stay tuned. Um, but we don't think that it's gonna be a problem. Plus we were really just happy to find something that had real automotive glass and that wasn't plastic because I don't know. I know we have like polycarbonate skylights, but for the side windows, it just felt like we need automotive glass. He's back. I'm back. I brought a pencil to trace, and this just has a little Phillips screw. So we're gonna, whoop. Uh, you know what, let me uh, tighten that back down on it, because it actually opened the window just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Can uh, we make the template with our flange? Um, or maybe not. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can. I don't think it'll be too loose. Let me let me look at it real quick. I think it'd be more accurate than using the thing with the knob. Yeah, that's a good idea. We're gonna use the flange as a template because the knob wouldn't be that accurate if we traced it. And tracing is the way to go, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a really good idea. That was a really good idea there, Ms. Vic. Thanks, Boom Boom. 
So something that we really like about these C.R. Lawrence windows is that this particular one comes with a screen that comes in and out. All of our big ones also come with a, a screen and the lower part of the window here actually hinges open. So by using the knob here on the inside, as you unscrew it, that part of the window opens and it only opens a few degrees, which is fine, just enough to get some airflow, but then it closes and seals. So that's pretty darn neat. <laughs> You're really whipping that window around there, Garcia. Oh, thank you. Painters tape your flange together so it is easier to work with. So we're gonna just trace the inside edge of this. Some scissors. From the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know this is gonna work. I don't think we've used these things for anything yet. I don't know what they're even for. They're probably for shearing like uh, the hair off steel or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those cut really nice. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, we might actually travel with these. Yeah. You can maybe be able to cut my hair with these. Yeah, we should. We should trim your nose hairs with them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be a sight? <laughs> I am going to make some tape donuts and plop them on to the back of our template. Oh, oh okay. don't do that. That wrecks the tape. It actually makes it not sticky anymore. I was just trying to be funny. Uh, don't do that. Um, but we're going to do that so we can properly trace the uh, piece of cardboard and not have anything to like obstacles to go around. Throw another one in there. This is very technical. Just say so you no. Know. Yeah. You got a six pack of tape donuts there. Technically, I think that we nailed this part of the project. Yeah, or taped it. All right, so I measured the other windows, how far the top of the skin comes down, and it was two inches on the nose from the eaves, uh, the drip trough, the eaves trough, what do you call these, eaves trough? Eaves trough. The eaves, the, uh, the gutter essentially. So I think that if we place the top edge, our cut line right there, yep. and we'll be able to remove the hat channel above that spot. What do you think? From inside. From inside, yeah. 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 So, so should we get a level and throw it on there just to make sure that line's pretty level? Or yeah. do you wanna just eyeball it and say, you know what, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna get my professional eyeball in here. That looks pretty good. Yeah. There's probably a bit of room for error, hey? <laughs> this is a DIY schoolie science experiment. Yeah, let us know if you've ever DIY'd something in the past. We'd love to know. Perfect is really how you make it. Perfect is perspective. Yeah, it's like you're making a school bus for yourself. It's a unique endeavor. Everybody's got different wants and needs in a school bus. And um, you just make it the best you can and work with what you got. Yeah. So you now go. that you've traced it, Can you're you bold enough to pull it off. Moment of truth. Yeah! There's donuts all over our bus. Oh no, now we got donuts on the bus. All right, there's the trace line. It's like whack-a-mole, but you're taking donuts off Well the bus. done. All right, hopefully we like that spot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so because this window is too big to fit between the vertical hat channel here in the wall, we've got to cut it out. And so we were debating whether we should position the center in the bathroom or off to the side. The toilet area is gonna be right about right here. And so we wanted to take advantage of the vertical support of this hat channel here. And if we had move this to the very center, then we would have to weld in a hat channel on this side and another hat channel on that side to support the uh, skin on the exterior of the schoolie here. Instead, having it closer to that hat channel over here only has us welding in one hat channel on this side to, to make this part of the skin more rigid and, and be able to withstand highway speeds and stuff like that. So that's why we're kind of doing it off to the side. Also, 
over here in this area is gonna be the sink and then also a little mirror and everything. So I think that with the composting toilet being here, you'll still have a great view of the outside as well as if you're brushing your teeth. Next up, we're gonna cut out the template that we traced here on the side of the beep mobile. For today's project, we're wearing goggles, earplugs, I don't know if you can see them. Earplugs and mittens. Safety gloves. Oh, safety gloves. We thought it'd be a good idea to put metal down to cover up our two rows of floor that we've laid so that we don't destroy it. Um, I think that was a smart idea. This right here. Something like that will be, actually I think it's like over here-ish, where the window's gonna go. May the sparks fly. <laughs> <laughs> Up, we're gonna grab the flap disc, which is this one here. It's like a sandpaper for your angle grinder, essentially. And this one's made for metal. They're made for wood, they're made for metal. There's different purposes. Make sure it's made of for metal. And we're gonna go and clean up these edges and uh, make them, deburr them, make them not sharp. Next up, Brian's going to cut a little bit off of the hat channel so that the flange for the window can sit up nice and snug against the already existing skin of the bus. So right now he's just measuring how much he needs to cut to make room for the flange. Now Brian is going to drill out the rivets. He's got this. There you go, that's done. Yeah. So this little piece of metal, here, let me point with this. So that little piece of metal right there is what's left holding this piece of hat channel on. And if we can cut just that and not the skin, then we won't have to worry about reskinning outside. So I think what I'm gonna do first is cut a diagonal from here down. That way I've got more room to get the tool closer because our cutting wheel's not very, like the diameter's not very big and it can't get all the way to the back completely. We'll try though. All right, now let's see if the tool will reach that back edge. You did it! Look, Let's it didn't even go. damage the back. We'll be able to sit right there and we'll be able to weld this piece on. You just need to pop the caulking up until that line. That way it naturally falls. So 
So this has given us a pretty good idea of what the spray foam looks like inside the hat channels. In some places it's full to the brim and in other places it's kind of hollow. Was it the best idea we've ever had? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it's cool to see that some of the hat channel is really full on the upper half and then maybe the bottom half just didn't have enough. So it's okay, pretty good. Not a total waste of time. Next on the docket, Brian is going to use the floppy disk to clean off the paint and the surface so that the welds stick and uh, take to the metal, I guess. Is that what happens? What is that? It's so the welds stick. All right, so we'll get a level. We'll get a clamp to clamp this in place. And then um, we'll weld th these two spots and then move over to this piece here and weld that piece in afterwards. All right, we got our ground clamped, our welders on. Get this out of the way. Battery positive terminals are disconnected. All right, here we go. Nice and level there. Bottom bubble. So that's gonna slide in behind there. So probably right about there. That way we've got a surface to weld to for the hat channel here in a second. All right. Looks like it was meant to be there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we can rip it into that later yep. uh, to secure that, but that doesn't need to be done right now. And before riveting, we can push it out, put some polyurethane caulking in there, uh, and that will, once we rivet, that'll uh, help seal the rivet holes, and then also um, help absorb vibrations from driving. Thanks for joining us on this quick little detour as we cut our bathroom window. Be sure to tune in again next week when we continue installing the floor. Thanks for being here. And until next time, friends. Adventure on. Adventure on. Solid view for taking a Leaving zero personal space just to get the shot. <laughs> Safety first, kiddos. Good idea. Look at this. I'm already filthy and we just got up here. Filthy. It's a dusty AF in this place. Good job. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, that way we can get like. A, a nice sequencer. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought you were being sexy. I wasn't. <sighs> it's not. It's about.